The Staple brand was officially founded in 1997. You know, I actually, I wasn't really trying to start a clothing brand at the time. You probably had like less than 12 to 20 stores in the whole world that sold this type of clothing. I wasn't thinking I'm gonna start a company. It was like an art expression, you know? It was like, I have ideas. You could either do it on paper, like a silk screen, but I was like, I want a silk screen on a shirt because I feel like just in living in New York City at the time, I felt like hanging this in my apartment is cool, but nobody gets to go to my apartment because I was lame, I was a loser, and my apartment was really small, you know, so no one got to go over there. But on a t-shirt, when I'm on a bus or a subway, like mad people get to see my message, and I felt like that was much more influential to do it that way, and that's really all it was. The staple core customer, we've tried to sustain, but also incorporate more people into the brand identity, into the brand culture. And in doing that, you have to, you know, walk a very fine line because you don't want to create something that is outside of the realm of what people know staple to be. And then too, you don't want to put yourself in a box to sort of, excuse the pun, pigeonhole yourself. It was a matter of, creating great collections that spoke to the breadth of what Jeff Staple does with his collaborations and the culture on a whole. Marketing at Staple is really fun. You can kind of go crazy with it creatively and um, it's pretty much like open-ended. And I think a lot of our aesthetics and our inspiration comes from New York and the Pigeon is very, you know, New York City based but at the same time, a lot of people can relate to it in other cities because there are pigeons in every city. I've always been a fan of like the streetwear culture and Staples has been one of those brands that just always stood out to me. You know, people ask how many times can you flip a pigeon? I mean, we're bringing it every time, new, fresh. So we, we try and just keep rolling with that. I felt like every brand needs an icon, right? So you have Nike, you have the swoosh, you have Adidas, you have the trefoil, you know? And I felt like Staple at the time was written out and it was hard sometimes to have an execution where like if you wanted it here, you know, it, it got too small or like on a button, it was like really, really small. And I wanted an icon and I always admired brands that had like animals, that were able to own an animal. So we started to adapt the pigeon as a real, icon for what to me represented New York, represented New York hustle, you know, that street mentality of like, just get it by any means necessary. That's what a pigeon does, right? If you look at a pigeon, the way it survives, it's not supposed to survive in a city, but it succeeds in a city, you know? It, it just manages a way to win. Courtney actually, the design director, gave me a piece of advice one time. He told me to, uh, be a constant fan, you know, be constantly learning, never get complacent. So sort of just, you know, look at everything with a, a mindset of like a childlike curiosity and, you know, just see it from every angle. When you design collections, you have to sort of merchandise cohesively as so it will look, how it will look on a mannequin, you know, preppy top, khakis, you know, tees that have preppy details. My initial approach to designing fall was to have a person wear camo fatigue looks with preppy looks. That was my initial overall idea for, for fall 2013. I've been so inundated with staying in the city all the time and, and Typically when I travel, it's like Tokyo, Paris, London, LA, like real urban centers, you know? Recently I've been like forcing myself to get out into like Bear Mountain, breakneck territory and like just, I've taken up rock climbing and stuff. I did a 2,500 mile road trip through Zion National Park. I like went off the road and like actually explored all those diners and you know, like truck stops and stuff. And so that's really recently been my inspiration. So a lot of getting back into the wilderness and outdoors, you know, rock climbing, camping, that sort of vibe. Some people say like when you have a hard decision to make, you should flip a coin to the side. Not for the heads or tails, because when the coin's flipping in the air, that's when you know what you want to happen, right? When, when you say, okay, heads I'm gonna do it, tails I'm not gonna do it. When it's flipping, you're like, please be heads, please. Like the one that you wish for is the one that you really want to do and that's the one you should go with. So you should flip a coin to see what you really in your heart want. There was a point where the design agency and the clothing line were starting to take off. Like in 98, it was just starting to bubble and it was really stressful for me to do both. And 
sort of, I was rationally trying to tell myself, you should just pick one and drop the other one. Just do one or the other. You can't do both, right? But my first heart instinct was like, no, I could fucking rock both of these. And I just, obviously I went with that one and now I have both. And they're both very successful and equally fulfilling. But I always shudder to think what might have happened if I like actually gave up one and there wouldn't be a clothing line today or there wouldn't be a design agency today. That'd be fucking crazy. dim sum style. Mm -hmm. You've got your stations here, meat over here. You've got vegetable sides over here. And then put hot sauce on it? Yeah, hot sauce on top. <laughs> oh my god. Give me your honest opinion as well. Alright, you digested yesterday well? Yeah. Alright, yeah. good. We're in Midtown right now, but we're heading to Brooklyn. Let's go. The brisket here, definitely less fatty than at Hill Country. See, it's all about that burnt chard bit, that cancer-causing bit. That's the best part. Mom, I still love your collard greens though, okay? <laughs> You're the best, love you. <laughs> A little bit like dim sum style. Mm -hmm. You've got your stations here, meat over here. You've got vegetable sides over here. And then put hot sauce on it? Yeah, hot sauce on top. <laughs> oh my god. Give me your honest opinion as well. Alright, you digested yesterday well? Yeah. Alright, yeah. good. We're in Midtown right now, but we're heading to Brooklyn. Let's go. The brisket here, definitely less fatty than at Hill Country. See, it's all about that burnt chard bit, that cancer-causing bit. That's the best part. Mom, I still love your collard greens though, okay? <laughs> You're the best, love you. 